you listen to me and you say, this guy, he's so damn pessimistic. It's doom and gloom. No. Again, I'm talking to real people here. They have a sense of history. I'll give you an example. Some of you may remember, people older than me. One of the most famous pictures of the Second World War is of a middle-aged Frenchman crying, tears streaming down his face in 1940 as German soldiers goose-stepped down a major thoroughfare of a French city. This is the nadir of the French experience. Who would have dreamt that 35, 40 years later, a combined military unit of German and French soldiers would march down the Champs-Élysées? Who would have believed it? Who would believe that the anchor of the EU is the relationship between Germany and France? And then, for those of you who are from South Africa, 1975, Time magazine carries an article. The reporter asks a group of Afrikaners, what will you do if the blacks rise? And the Afrikaners say, quote, we will ride till our stirrups are filled with blood meaning we will never give up. Less than 15 years later, that great man Nelson Mandela comes out of prison and the unthinkable happens. Apartheid, to use Trotsky's old expression, disappears into the garbage can of history. And a third example. I'm a Russian and Soviet historian by training. I knew as everybody, you didn't have to be a, a professor to know this, all you had to do was spend five hours in Moscow in the 60s and 70s and the 80s, and you knew that that country was up against the wall. When 500 people line up to buy toilet paper, and the store runs out of toilet paper, when people line up for meat and there is no meat, you know that the country is economically bankrupt, and that Marxism and Leninism is also spiritually bankrupt. And yet, without a single exception, without a single exception, one of your own, a professor at the University of Toronto, wrote a book at the end of the 80s in which he talked about how Gorbachev would change the Soviet Union, but essentially the Communist Party would remain in power. The book was so widely acclaimed, he moved from Toronto to probably the only place in North America that has a better reputation, the University of Toronto, and that was Harvard. He was wrong. In 1991, there was no more Soviet Union. Because in March of 1985, Gorbachev had come to power. We are now in a period of Pietrostroika, restructuring, glasnost, openness, novia Michelinia, new thinking in foreign policy. And in 1991, it's all over. The Soviet Union has disappeared. What you and I grew up with, the Soviet Union, the Soviet menace, the fear of nuclear war, conflagration with the Soviet Union, it's not there anymore. The historian is not brighter. He is not smarter than the political scientist, the sociologist, or the anthropologist. What the historian brings to the table, however, is a sense of perspective. And what I'm telling you is, there are many lessons of history. One of the best is, whether it is the future of the Soviet Union, apartheid, or whether or not there will ever be peace in the Middle East, the historian will tell you that one of the great lessons of history is, you never, never, never say never. Thank you very much.